Right, I think uh, we are we are live, um, which is fantastic. So, um, hi, and uh, welcome to our first episode of the business of writing a book, lighting the way and leaving your mark. Uh, and they say, write what you know, because who better to expand on a subject matter than someone who's lived it, with both uh, innate and acquired experience and skills to pass on to others. And that's why I wrote my book, Destination Animation: How Smart Marketeers Convey Complex Messages Memorably the first ever B2B book on animation. So the business of writing a book, lighting the way and leaving your mark is a LinkedIn live series where I sit down with creatives, experts and entrepreneurs to discover the inspiration behind their decision to write a book and how doing so helped them leave their mark in their respective fields and lead the way for others from a business, personal or industry perspective. I'm delighted to welcome today Lou Hamilton, an artist, author, award-winning filmmaker, host of Brave New Girl podcast and founder of Silk Studios, her podcast guest agency. Whatever the medium, she's made it her mission to use creativity to make a positive impact on the world through sharing stories of people who have overcome fears, challenges and adversity. This is why she hosts a podcast and why she helps people to guest on other podcasts. And it's why she wrote and illustrated her latest internationally best-selling book, Dare to Share. So welcome, Lou. Lovely to have you. Oh, lovely to be here. Nice to see you and happy new year, everyone. <laughs> happy to, new year to you too. It's fantastic. So let's just dive straight in. Um, where did you get the idea to write the book and kind of what inspired you? And tell us a bit more about the book. Yeah, so it really sort of, I guess, started in ancient history when I turned 50, which seems like a very long time ago now. <laughs> um, and I, you know, my children were leaving the nest and I was sort of, looking at kind of the next period of my life and not really knowing what I was going to be doing and and I just was inspired to pick up a drawing and a, a pencil and start drawing and out popped this little character brave new girl and um like she was sort of I guess she represented sort of everything that I wanted for the kids and and as it turned out for myself you know to be brave and fearless and to go out into the world and make mistakes and pick yourself up again and all of that and um, and so I kept drawing her and it, she seemed to sort of resonate on on social media. And, and somebody said to me, oh, you should try and get a book um, made with with these drawings yep. and, and sayings. And so um, that first book, Brave New Girl, How to Be Fearless, was published. And then the next book, which was more of a coaching book, self-help book, with, which was called Fearless. And then I wanted Brave New Girl to sort of get out into the world a little bit more and and in a in sort of a more expansive way and podcasts were just coming to the UK um, in a sort of big way and yeah. I thought well why not start a podcast and so I did Brave New Girl and the idea was to invite real life Brave New Girls who are having an impact in the world and and showing the courage that it takes to do to do so and uh, and as I was doing that I was thinking well this is amazing having these women come on every week and but I can only interview one woman a week. <clears throat> so that's 52 women a year if I do it every week. Yep. And, uh, <clears throat> and I thought, actually, I want to be able to help more people. And, and so um, somebody suggested the idea of an agency. And, and I thought, and it was right at the beginning of lockdown. And I thought, actually, that would be amazing to help people to get onto other people's podcasts. And, and so that was how the agency was born. And, and then I thought, well, so this is a really long winded okay. <laughs> roundabout answer to I'm getting there. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, but you know, it costs money to, to be represented by an agency and not everyone could afford that. And that doesn't sit very well with me. So I thought, well, why not write a book? Most people can afford 12.99 and put in the kind of the whole process of what it takes to, write your story and why you're doing that, why you're wanting to share what you've learned um, and your expertise with the world and, and to be able to do that on podcast as a, as a guest. Um, you know, it's amazing. You get, you know, up to 40 minutes maybe to talk about your thing and to get visibility, get global, make global impact and to attract new audiences into your world. So it seemed like a really, um, impactful way to um 
you know kind of stretch your marketing and your PR into a kind of different strategy and and I thought well you know there are lots of entrepreneurs um who you know feeling kind of invisible and that it's hard yeah. to get traction in social media and and so I, I felt that this was a really good way to help people to get out there and and so the book is really a guide step to step by step um, guide to to being able to do that fantastic um and how did you sort of settle on on kind of the message around the book sort of I suppose the tone and and obviously you know what's in it and how you're kind of getting that across to your readers yeah so really I guess it came from the title which was dare to share and and I was very mindful of people like me who are naturally introverted and you know that it would feel very um very challenging to go on stage and do a talk about what you do um but what I'd found with um podcasting as a podcast host was that you know when you're sitting having a conversation with one other person it feels like an intimate conversation and it doesn't feel scary you don't feel like oh my god I'm talking to thousands of people um whereas I think extroverts might be much more aware of the the bigger audience so I felt that podcast guesting was was much more kind of democratic in that it it catered for extroverts but also people who are quieter and and more introverted and and I felt well if I can do it and I was practicing what I was preaching um then anybody can and so dare to share is is really sort of um that comes from that and the idea that you know if you're telling your story what do you share do you share everything or do you keep things, some things private and Mm -hmm. and boundaries around certain things. And that if you, and because I take you through working out what your story is and then the themes and topics, I I really put a big emphasis on on what the things that you're wanting to share because you're wanting to serve, but also what things you can keep for yourself because you don't have to share everything. Um, And so I felt that, you know, that kind of storytelling element and um, and being able to be vulnerable, but also being able to protect yourself too. Yeah, I, I know that some of your other um, work in the past has been about um, uh, repurposing your story, so keeping it fresh. And and you know, you obviously we've all got like one story, our story. And and how do you keep that fresh every time that you you get interviewed or um, you might write an article or whatever the case is. So um, does your this book, because um, I know this is your third book, does that cover some of that as well um, on yeah. how to keep that story fresh? Yeah, so the first part is telling your story and that kind of looks at it in a chronological way and it sort of follows the, the hero's journey um, kind of structure. Um, but then the second part is the themes and topics and and you're right you don't want to um, be going from podcast to podcast just churning out the same thing and you know some stuff is going to be the same and you you're going to be having new new listeners but also some people like to follow you from podcast to podcast so it's really good to have something new to say in each Mm -hmm. one and really target it to the actual podcast and I'm really keen on this idea that you have a have a really good understanding of the DNA of the podcast that you're going on so that mm. you are there to serve their listeners. Um, mm. So what, what is it in your story that um, can be impactful and, and learning and inspirational for the people of, of this particular podcast? So when you, when you target those themes, those topics, your story to each individual podcast then you're inevitably going to have something new to say fantastic and and having written this book has it sort of opened up business or personal uh, opportunities for you yeah it definitely it does because you know there are always going to be people that want to do it themselves and they'll they'll read the book and they'll you know diligently kind of work through it and 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 do it um there are other people that go okay now i've got a really good understanding i've got an overview of, of why it's a good thing to do, what's involved, um, what's really important to, to know and to, to offer. Um, but actually I'm gonna get my 
um, assistant to to do it, um, or or um, I'll um, I'll come to you and I'll get you to do it. Um, and so I think that's that's been the kind of the the benefit is that either people can know how to do it themselves or that they decide actually as an agency we want to hire you to represent us and I'm just about to bring out a course which um, takes the book and and sort of simplifies it into kind of really really easy step by step um, sort of way. modules to take them through yeah yeah okay amazing and has 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 it broadened your sort of personal business uh, demographic I think that um, what it's done is allowed people to think, oh, that could be me, where, right. where before they might have thought, oh, no, that's that's for other people. I, I couldn't possibly do that. Um, and that's too scary. Or it's um, I don't even know what podcasts are or I don't know, understand what podcast guesting is. Um, I don't know how this can fit into my marketing and PR strategy. Um, it, so I think that it's it's opened up. The world for people in a way that maybe before it was just like a a little bit kind of vague and blurred and um feeling like oh that's for other people whereas i think you know with the book it it it's it is much more expansive so it allows more people to see that yes they can do it too it's more inclusive people can feel that they as you say recognize themselves in it that, that's uh, that's really cool and what was the journey like to actually put it all down on paper well, I love writing, um, and actually, I have a um, a routine where I the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is not turn on the light. I just grab my computer and I start writing. So whether I'm writing a book or a blog or a, a newsletter or a post or whatever, I'm I always write. So um, so the habit is already there, and and with with a the books what tends to happen is that I start writing along an idea along a theme and gradually it sort of evolves and it often very very often turns into something completely different and kind of gets honed and then at that point I start to to structure it um, and to think kind of a bit more um, with a bit more rigor about what it what this thing is going to be um, but the main thing is that I make sure that I show up every day and and because it's something that I love to do it it's sort of um you know I'll probably always be writing a book <laughs> amazing is that um the the writing in the morning is that like the the morning papers that Julia Cameron uh, uh sort of inscribes in the the artist's way is that what you is that part of what you do that's how Are you I familiar start? with that Yes, yeah. that, that is how I started. Me and, too. <laughs> yeah, and in the early days, I mean, this is probably 20 years ago, um, I would just write as a stream of consciousness. Mm -hmm. But then I found that um, that I did know what I wanted to be saying and that I wanted to be using that. And so, so now it's less of a, it, it's not a stream of consciousness anymore. I know each morning what I'm writing for. Um, and so it's much more kind of directed. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, I'd been doing it uh, as well. I've been doing that whole sort of morning papers and writing stream of consciousness, et cetera. And then when I started on my book, um, uh, I actually did it in six weeks because I, I was in that practice. It's incredible how your brain can be sort of trained to do stuff. Um, and yeah, I, I'm, I do recommend that book to anybody who wants to start writing the, so it's Julia Cameron, The Artist Way. Um, it covers all sorts of things, not just writing, isn't it? So yeah. it's a whole sort of bringing the artist out of you. Uh, very cool. It's quite an old book as well, isn't it? It was uh, started in the 70s or 80s yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, but for any kind of art. But it, but it's actually sort of that it's the discipline, isn't it? And I, I was yeah. listening to, to someone talking who's actually a tattoo artist. And he was saying that um, it's don't seek motivation, seek discipline and the motivation will come. And, and I that's think interesting. Yeah. And I think that's how you master anything is by showing up, doing the work and and the creativity comes through, flows through that. Whereas if you sit, you know, and I, you know, I paint, I do painting. So if I if I sort of st stood in front of my blank canvas and thought, right, OK, inspiration, creativity come to me now. That's not that, you know, I would I would get what, you know, they call writer um, artist block or whatever creative block 
Um, but with all the, you're so creative and you do so much. So you, you're doing painting, you're writing, you, you illustrate, um, you film, uh, produce uh, and direct and all that kind of stuff. And now you, you just told me earlier, you're also going to be doing some tattoo artistry, which is amazing. How do you, with talking of discipline, how do you decide, okay, now I'm going to do this for a bit and now I'm going to do that for a bit? Or, or, does it, or do you wait for the sort of flow to come? Or do you stick to that discipline where, okay, this morning I'm going to do this and this afternoon I'm going to do that? How do you do it? Yeah, I'm very, I'm a very black and white person. And so my, my diary is very black and white. So yeah, the, um, those first two hours of the morning are always writing. Um, I have, um, I, I paint in the mornings because that's when the, the best light is. So when I get up, I do my painting. Um, you know, the people talk about it and when they're, you know, sports people do it, you know, they have, they know when they're going to do their particular activities or exercise or training or whatever and, and so it's very it's very similar being a, a creative person um but I just have I know chunks like on a Tuesday is when I record the podcast and when I edit the podcast um Friday mornings is when I I do my research for the the guests the next week so I, I'm very kind of clear clear cut which means that my diary feels very spacious um, and, and the more structured I am, the more creative freedom I feel that I have. Um, okay. And it, it's sort of very strange. Um, um, you'd think that it would be the opposite, but actually when I've talked to other creative people and they, they say the same, that the more structured they are, the more liberating it feels. So do you actually have um, time slotted into your diary, into your electronic diary or physical diary? Um, yeah, to, to block out time yeah oh, and, amazing. And I, block, I block out my week um, on a Sunday and then I just kind of jig it around as I as I go through the week but usually it, it's pretty much um, pretty much the same every week that's um, brilliant yeah and, and do you have any tips for anyone looking to to write a book of their own um, again either for personal or, or business purposes well I think if you know you've got expertise and it can feel a bit daunting when the idea of writing a book um, when you think about yourself and your own kind of ability or whatever but when you think I have expertise that others are really really wanting to know then that kind of in, that helps you to sort of get past that sort of inner doubt or sabotage or whatever it is that kind of stops us doing things and think okay other people need to know this the stuff that I know about so I need to get that down on paper in in the best way I possibly can that's um that other people are going to find the most useful and yeah. the most kind of uh, reader friendly so okay. yeah. so I think um think about the people think really think about your your readers what what you're wanting to give them what they're going to gain what transformation they're going to have um, and why is it you that is going to do that? Amazing. And why would you encourage somebody to, to write their own book? Well, I think if you're, well, I mean, if you're a creative person, you're a sort of a natural writer, then, um, then I think that's something that sort of will kind of be, will, you'll be pulled towards anyway. Um, but I think as a, as a business person, writing a book is, is really powerful um, because one of the things is that when you teach others, you get a really, you have to have a really good understanding of yeah. what it is that you're doing. Yeah. Um, and so, and you know, that's an ancient, that's an age old ancient saying, you know, to, um, if you want to learn better, teach more. Um, and so writing a book is, is really that, um, that you, you can't hide behind anything. The words are there in black and white. Um, but also, um, I think that, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's, it, it helps with your marketing, you know, in a very kind of superficial way. It's, it's like, I, was you asking, know, I was going to ask you about that, actually. How, how does it, how's it affected your marketing? And, and how do you use that whole sort of having written a book and, and having the, you know, the physical copy to maybe hand out or, or send to people? How do you find that uh, works uh, for you? I think it is, it's a calling card. And, and also it's, um, 
you know, people who fight, who struggle to to write for all their social media and be, you know, constantly churning out content. Well, if you've written a book, you have got a ton of content that you can repurpose um, mm -hmm. and talk about on lives and, you know, all of that kind of thing. And um, and also people know then that you're the expert. So they're going to come to you and your business because they know what you, you know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is. It's a. I agree. It's a. It's a, it's a lovely. It's and, and the other thing is that people might throw out business cards, but they'll never throw out a book, <laughs> even if they don't read it themselves. They'll give it to somebody else. So it's got much more shelf life, hasn't it? Um, which is is lovely. And I, I love books anyway. The best of times. But that's pretty cool. Um, so what did you learn you, about yourself uh, during the whole process of writing? And and this is of course your your third book. So um, you're a bit of a pro at this. But uh, maybe what did you learn? Maybe in the first book and the second book and the third book. What What's been the progression for you? Well, I think the first book I was going through a period. So Brave New Girl, How to Be Fearless, it was very much feeling um, very unnerved by um, hitting midlife and menopause and empty nesting and, and you know, what is, what, what's ahead of me. And so the drawings were sort of this little character kind of in a way led me through that. Um, and I think very often when you're writing, it is also um, a mirror on, on your own life because if you haven't experienced something, you're not really kind of that interested in exploring it. Um, and I think with uh, then then second book was Fearless. So that was really looking um, at the kind of the self-coaching. So I trained as a coach. And again, it was, you know, it's expensive to have a coach. And, and I thought, well, I can write, I can write in the book, I can give people the tools themselves to, to work through the process of, of self-coaching so that they can find how to fear less and, mm -hmm. and how to sort of um, bring more courage in, into their lives, um, even when they're struggling and, and finding things hard and, you know, and, and how, how to be resilient. And, um, oh my goodness, that, that book was, you know, a, a pretty useful book for um, the pandemic for the last two years, um, and then the th and then the third book was um, it was a kind of process of discovery for me in in who I really feel passionate about working with in the agency, but also who I want to be inviting onto the onto Brave New Girl podcast and. And it became very clear as I was writing the book that the people I'm really interested in championing are those who are trying to have an impact either in their community um, with um, the people that they serve or for the planet. Um, and so, yeah, it kind of feels like a sort of a game changer for me that I really know who I want to work with and who I want to stand behind and help. Um, and is it... Do you find it's mainly uh, a woman or, or is it lots of men as well? Was it, um, what's the sort of ratio uh, between, and also your books, are they directed mainly at women? Um, is it kind of a mixture? What's the feeling? Um, I think with Brave New Girl, How to Be Fearless, it, it's been mainly women um, and girls who bought it or men who bought it for their women and girls. Um, I guess because that's my experience, that that's who I write for. Right. But, you know, these are a sort of universal print principles. So they are for everybody. Um, but, you know, when I'm thinking about my reader or I'm thinking about the listener to the podcast, I'm thinking that they're people who identify as women or non-binary. Um, I don't have men in mind but the principles work for men yeah that's mm. and and your podcast um guests and uh podcast clients are they mainly women um or are they a mixture as well yeah i i did start at the beginning they were a mix but then i realized more and more that actually i wanted to champion women and um and and that sort of evolved but it feels okay. like that's very much you know I know I understand that and I understand the problems and I understand you know the challenges and so I I want to um find women who 
have, are finding their way through that, both to mm. help me, but also to help the women who listen. Do, do you find that women have a harder time um, having uh, their voice heard? Um, or, you know, generally as, um, again, in a personal life uh, and a business life? Is that something that you've come across or? Um... Well, historically, you know, we've not had the platforms um, and it's it has been much more, there's been many more barriers to entry. But what I love about podcasting is that the, the men, I guess, in America were sort of first off the bat, but the women are catching up really, really fast and there's no kind of barrier to entry. And, you know, whether you want to be a podcast host or a guest, um, there is nothing stopping you. And, and so I think that it's a very democratic, egalitarian platform. And, and I love that. Yeah, I have to agree. I also like it. I, like, I do enjoy Zoom. I think it feels more intimate, even though you might have a, a massive audience um, listening in or tuning in or, or watching. Uh, but somehow it does feel like a sort of one on one or one on to a few conversation, which is lovely, which you can't really get on a stage if you're standing there with a, a mic and, you know, uh, lights on you and everything else. It's much more daunting, I think, um, whereas you can be sitting down in, in your own environment and you probably could, heard my cats earlier on. Meowing, so it's it's just quite nice. It's uh, it does it's quite egalitarian. I agree with you. So it's uh, and it does lend itself for many more people sharing their voice and sharing their stories, which is really exciting. So tell me, what's what else is on the plan? You you, you we were talking earlier on. You saying that you you've put your sort of New Year's resolutions uh, together and you've got a, a kind of kind of good idea of where you want this year to take you. Um, is there anything you could share with us on that front? And and also um, as you are prolific writer and a prolific artist are there any things on the horizon that we should be looking out for yeah my I've got a, a one woman show that opens in February in central London um so Amazing. I do um big abstract paintings uh sort of color field paintings um is so that at the farm that's at the farm yeah um so anyone that's interested in either coming to the to the private view, um, if we're going to be able to do that or to um, go and see it by appointment, then uh, just get in contact and, and I can um, I can um, show you how to um, go and see it. Um, I've got a course on 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 pitching to podcasts that's coming out um, within the within the next month. Um, again, you'll be able to find out more about that um, on um, the website and on my social media. I'll be blabbing about that, I'm sure. <laughs> Amazing. What, what's the um, URL for the best place to, to find you? So it's www.silk-studios.co.uk. Amazing. And any any books on the horizon? Yeah, I'm, I'm um, just thinking about the next one. So I'm starting to, to write that. And uh, then the new uh, new season has just started on Brave New Girl podcast. And uh, the, su the subtitle is the, the Women's Impact Project. So I think um, the book is going to stem very much from, from what evolves with, with that. Amazing. What's, what's the time scales that you, you you found that it takes you to from the nub of an idea of a book to publishing? I mean, you've obviously got three three uh, experiences so far. What was the sort of time scale for those three? And, and does it get faster or, or not? I think it's sort of roughly. Well, Brave New Girl, How to Be Fearless was um, it was a gift book of drawings and sayings and uh and it was unusually fast. So I'd got an agent and a publisher within three weeks of starting to look. And, wow. and then I think it was under a year before the book came out. Um, and then because I was sort of in their, under their umbrella, the next one um, happened fairly straightforwardly. So I guess that was a couple of years before that one came out. And then this one, I was sort of faffing about for quite a long time, not really knowing what the direction was. And it was only when I realized that it was about podcast guesting and being very specific about that, that then it kind of wrote itself. It was, then it was fairly straightforward and, and I decided to go with Rethink um, and, and their structure is, you know, is six months. So you you basically from from your kind of main draft 
getting it to them to it being a you know a, a, a physical copy <laughs> <laughs> in your hand is six months so yeah it's brilliant and uh, and yeah. they were amazing the editing process was fantastic um I, I agree everything press are brilliant joe and, and lucy are fantastic um as you know they did my book as well so um yeah i think i introduced you in fact <laughs> yes, did, yeah so i'm glad it worked it's fantastic well i mean is there anything else that you'd like to leave with um our listeners and viewers um as to I don't know, any inspirational nuggets that you can share with uh, aspirational writers? Yeah, I think it, it just, it always comes back to showing up and doing the work. Just turn up in front of, choose the time of day that really works for you. For me, first thing in the morning before I have a chance for my kind of intellectual brain to kick in, um, mm. that definitely is the, the best time for me. But, you know, other people, you know, feel that it's better at night time when the kids want to bed or, um, you know, that I'd, I actually started writing first thing in the morning when my children were little because I could get in a couple of hours before they were awake um, mm. and before the kind of chaos ensued. <laughs> um, and then it turned out that actually that is that is the best time for me. So I, I, I think find, find that time that is going to be an hour or an hour and a half or two hours that is non-negotiable and that's your creative time and you know you have the structure and then yeah let your imagination fly amazing well amazing advice thank you so much Lou it's been fantastic to have you on board and uh, thanks for sharing all your insights and um, yeah we we um, look forward to your future exciting projects for the year uh, keep us posted on social but thanks very much take care thanks so much take care bye bye bye